guys, it's Micah, and welcome to another episode of An Octave Higher. So, I bought a new microphone, which was originally intended for my live streams of Final Fantasy XIV, which I've recently decided to do, but I figured, hey, I can use it with my computer too, so it'll probably make me sound a little bit better. Uh, hopefully I sound a lot more clear than I have in the past, and, uh, well... Yeah, that's more of what I'm hoping for. And hopefully you can hear me. I've been doing several tests uh, on and off to see if I can uh, get it right how I need it. So hopefully I have it at the volume that I need to have it in order for you to hear me over the game's audio. So um, yeah, I guess we're gonna start. I remember very little as to where we left off actually. Like I remember that Frederick got kidnapped by the Libertad members. And I remember that we rescued him, but other than that, I really don't remember much. So, let's just dive in. Alright, we got dots. Before sunrise, the police had the situation contained. Many Libertad members were apprehended that night at Mason de Beauvoir. Some who had fled were later captured around the area. A few turned themselves in. The police operation was a success, especially because they managed to arrest Libertad's leader, Fyodor Hendricks. About a month later, in October, the Libertad members were tried on charges of assault, theft, kidnapping, treason, and many more. Fyodor Hendricks was the sole liber liberated representative at the trial. The remaining Libertad members stayed behind in prison. The only other defendant was Madame Edith de, Edith de Beauvoir, who was charged as an accessory to Libertad's crimes for harboring the traitors. The trial didn't take long. In a matter of a few hours, the jury delivered a guilty verdict on all charges. The judge headed out, handed out life sentences to all Libertad members. Madame Beauvoir was sentenced to ten years. Wow. Guess that's why you don't become an accessory to crimes. And I left my water over on the other end of the room, so I'm gonna quickly grab that. <clears throat> ow! Fuck! Ow! Ow! I hit my knee on the corner of the desk. Ow! Shit. Fuck. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> In a move that set historical precedent for the reigning monarch, the king himself overruled the judge's decision for one of the defendants. Fyodor Hendrick's sentence was upgraded to the death penalty. Oh shit, what? A fortnight later, the sentence was carried out. Oh. Oh. Fyodor Hendricks was executed in a public forum? Thousands of citizens turned out for the event. Oh, shit. I didn't think he was gonna die that quickly. In fact, I wasn't even sure if he was gonna die at all. God damn. And that was the end of Libertad. Is it, though? <laughs> Is it? The citizens breathed a collective sigh of relief, even those who had opposed the public execution. A key member of Libertad, G. Sang Alice Habana, was, however, never found. We later learned from Commander Wolf that, G that G G Sang had managed to escape from Mason de Beauvoir in the confusion of the mass arrest of the mass arrests following the defeat of Hendrix. The police have been searching for G Sang since then, but to no avail. But with the organization dissolved, Overture is once again safe. Is it though? I feel like it's not. I really feel like it's not. Cause the game's still continuing. And I know it's not just because of the plot that's going on between figuring out magic stuff. Because they wouldn't introduce Libertad otherwise. Like, there's more to it. I know there is. Sunday 15th, Quintilis AM 314. What? Oh my- oh! Oh god, her hair is long, she's in a maid suit, I f and I'm so confused. Oh lord, what the fuck? Your afternoon tea, my lord. Like I said, Elise, you don't have to call me- Whoa, what is that outfit? Hmm? I met Aretha this morning, and she said since I now work as a maid, I should wear this maid uniform as a fan service. Huh? Frederick, what is a fan service? Heck if I know! After Fran's research ended in failure, yes, he failed, ha! <laughs> Elise became unemployed. Wait, are we at the end of the game? There's no way we're at the end of the game. When I heard that she was thinking of going back to work in the factory, I offered her a job in my house as a maid. After some consideration, she accepted my offer. So ever since then, we've been... 
We've been... We've... Frederick, is something wrong? Your face is red. We've been living together. Well, I mean, of course she stays with the other maids in the maids' living quarters, but still... Frederick? Uh, no nothing. I, I I'm fine. Why are you here anyway? Isn't today supposed to be your day off? Oh, I came to play the piano. After hearing Elise piano, my father agreed her special permission to play the piano anytime she wanted. I think the piano is also one of the reasons she agreed to work as a maid here. Besides, your sorcerer match is tonight, right? Y yeah Well, you said I could watch your match if I was free, and I am free, so... Are you going to watch? Yeah, I'll be cheering for you! Dude, I want to know how they got so fucking cheery together and so buddy-buddy before she was just still really, like, like, not into being around him and now she's, like, all over him and being on his friend and stuff. And, like, she looks so much older now and so does he! Like, what happened? Really? Well, uh, thank you, Elise. I'll definitely win tonight's match. I know you will. Elise's smile is beautiful as always. She was sad after she and Franz failed to fix the broken piano at the factory, but nowadays she seems cheerful. To be honest, I'm just happy that after a year she seems to have forgiven me for the incident that occurred in this very room. Oh man, it's been a year? Oh god, it's been a year?! Ah! I no wonder they look so much older and different and so cheery, like... Ah, this is weird. Now we've become friends who are close enough to go together to my sorcerer mat. Wait a minute. Hmm? You're not going to the stadium dressed like that, are you? Hmm? What's wrong with this dress? Elise cocks her head while smiling innocently. Uh, I don't think you should wear that. No? Hmm. Ah, what about a nurse outfit? No! A sailor uniform? No! A cheerleader uniform? No. Frederick, you're so hard to please. It's more like he doesn't want anyone else getting any ideas. Wait! Holy crap! That's the end! No! 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 That can't be the end! How is that the end? No! <laughs> What? That cannot be the end. How is this the end? I do not accept this! I do not accept this! No! I need to replay this! This can't be the end! All that build-up just to have that kind of ending? Are you kidding me? No! Wait. What? The end? You of an your afternoon tea, my lord. Achievement unlocked. Ah, no! 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 I need a better ending than this. What the hell? No! No! Is there another game that's supposed to come out? What is this shit? I need a better ending. No! Damn it, I'm replaying this! Ah! No! I am. This is unacceptable! No! I can't. I just. What? That's way too simple! That is way too simple of an ending. Like, that was so short. All that build up and then Libertad just dissolves and like everything is happily ever after. And like, no, no, I'm not having this shit. I'm replaying this game, damn it. And no, this is not okay. For fuck's sakes, I gotta make different decisions because obviously the decisions I made were just way too fucking simple. So, Maybe if I make more complicated decisions, more stuff happens. Like... No! <laughs> I am not okay with this shit! Just... Let me look at the gallery here. There's got to be more I'm missing. There's got to be pic- Yeah, see? There's pictures I'm missing! There's more to this! There is more to this! 
I've only got 43% completion. No! I have to finish this. I have to... There's just... No! <laughs> this is... I just... No! No! I want the more complicated storyline, damn it! <sighs> Alright. We're going for another ending, guys. I'll see you in that other ending. Actually, you know what? I'm not gonna just end this video here. Why would I do that? I've got plenty of time to create- to start again and do stuff differently. So... Ah, damn it, I'm starting again. Fuck this game. God damn. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment we've been waiting for! The main event of Lord Godwin's birthday celebrations! A sorcerer match between Lord Godwin's son, Lord Frederick, and a mystery challenger! Huh. The six crystal balls floating in the corners of the hexagonal arena are glaring with nervous glimmer, as if they, like the willpower-filled mana boiling in my hands, were growing restless, waiting, awaiting the start of the match. My opponent and I are standing face to face at the center of the massive arena, separated only by an old wizard referee. The stadium was luxurious, like a ballroom on a massive scale. Thousands of people could be seated in rows of seats, stretching all the way up to the ceiling, as far from the arena floor as the west wall was from the east. Still, when the announcer's voice rang out, it didn't fail to reach the ears of even the furthest spectator. He's using Amplify Magic on his voice, of course. Contestants, are you ready? The wizard gives me a solemn look, but also gentle, like a grandfather. A weak smile peeks from his bushy white beard and mustache. Frederick Godwin? I'm ready. These formalities annoy me. Let's begin. Janice Wolfe, are you ready? I am. A woman. This must be a joke. And for my father's birthday celebrations, no less. I'm sorry, my cousin, but this is important. I need to just do this. I need to do this. Leave me alone. I need to fix this ending. A few weeks ago, I complained to my father that my matches were getting too easy and I wanted a real opponent who could fight. Now he's giving me this kind of match and he calls it a special event. This must be his way to spite me. Is this woman even a sorcerer player? Sorcerer is a sport, a game of magic. The rules are simple. Six crystals are placed in the six corners of the arena, three for each contestant, and to win the match, all you have to do is break two of the three that belong to your opponent. Okay, seriously? Stop. Stop. <laughs> okay, so I guess her boyfriend and her friends and his friends are going to the strippers. So, and the male strippers are there. All right, so that's great. Good to know. I'll get back to you later. I'm busy. This is the fun of the game because your opponent only needs to break two of your crystals to win. You can't just camp in front of one crystal and guard it. You have to keep moving and use strategy. An experienced sorcerer, sorcerer wastes no time in formulating a strategy. Even before the match begins, they observe their surroundings, watch their opponent, and decide on their opening move. For example, I'm gathering willpower. That should tell my opponent that I will cast some sort of earth magic spell, so they'd have to prevent their, prepare their own spell that's appropriate to counter it. But this woman? She's as stiff as a statue. She's not readying any magic. Her eyes just... gaze into me. It's strange. Her eyes don't communicate aggression. They're not murderous, but... Her eyes seem empty, like she wasn't seeing anything. But she was. She was seeing everything. Then let's begin! The orchestra begins to play furiously as soon as the wizard signals the start of the match. I'm upset that my father is making me play against this woman I've never even heard of, so I'll just finish this quickly. I'm in no mood for a game right now. I aim my arm at my opponent and prepare to summon a rain of rocks. But before I summon anything, an aura of faith starts emanating from her. She aims her arm at me and opens her hand wide. Her palm flashes, then... A violent jet of wind bursts from her hand. I need to block this. I quickly raise my willpower-filled palm and cast my spell. Summon! A wall of rock erupts from the ground in front of me. The wind slams against my rock shield. The shield breaks and crumples, but not before step stopping the attack. But I'm not waiting around. As my shield crumbles, I'm running off to the side, gathering courage magic for the next volley. I feel my right forearm heating up with fiery power. But my opponent isn't idle either. She prepares to counter me with a magic spell of her own. Intelligence, huh? That's fire against water. This'll be interesting. 
Her sudden wind attack took me by surprise. I didn't expect her to be able to cast such a powerful spell so quickly. Maybe this wolf girl knows how to play sorcerer after all. But then again, so do I. Summon! I point my finger at her. Summon! She does the same. A gush of fire roars from my finger at my opponent. A sharp blast of water shoots out from hers. It nullifies my attack and even packs enough of a punch to stagger me when it connects. Damn it! Is my fire that weak? I quickly recover my composure and return to my battle stance. I'm drenched now, but that's a minor discomfort. Wolf eyes me with an almost quizzical look. What's with that fire, kid? I thought you were pretty good with the way you reacted to my first attack, but then... Who are you to ask me such questions? I'm a lord of overture, little Miss Wolf. Shut up and fight me. Huh. And then the woman smirks at me. She's underestimating me now. That will work in my favor. Very well. However, she isn't one to be trifled with either, and I will not make the same mistake twice. <clears throat> As I gather willpower, my opponent starts building up faith. With swift, precise motion, she brings her right hand in front of her face, the open palm facing her. It's another summon of wind. In that case, I'll just... No. No, it's not just summon. Wolf suddenly closes the hand to a fist. She invokes Amplify on top of the summon. Faith, summon, and amplify. It's a tornado! Before I have time to consider my next move, Wolf straightens her arms and opens her hand. A tornado stretches dozens of feet into the air and barrels towards me. I try to summon the willpower I have built up, but it's too late. The tornado has sent me flying. I hit the ground hard. Ugh! I get back up, but Wolf has already prepared another tornado. Who in the name of the gods is this woman? I need to reevaluate my strategy. Let's see, my rock shield won't be able to withstand that tornado. I can cast another earth magic spell like Quake, but I don't see how it can help in this situation. At any rate, I don't need to beat her. I need to break her crystals. But attacking the crystals openly probably wouldn't work. I expect she knows how to protect them. Alright, let's try something... unexpected. I charge up a new attack, this time focusing on courage. What, fire again? Didn't learn your lesson the first time? Wolf's dispassionate voice is almost inaudible with the wind swirling about, but I can catch her taunting me. Yes, I hope that doesn't scare you. Don't worry, I'm not. What are you waiting for, then? You've summoned the wind. Where's the Amplify? Oh, it's coming, all right. Wolf makes a fist at the right hand. Amplify. This is it. Instead of dodging, I dash straight toward the wind that's quickly turning into a tornado. Summon! What? What are you doing? Contrary to the woman's expectation, I'm not summoning a fire attack. Instead, I combine my magic with her own. This is a cooperative technique normally employed by two magicians who are working together. It's called combo magic. If I combine my fire magic with her tornado, a deadly fire tornado is born. Wolf can't orient... Wolf can't reorient herself to the new situation in time. I quickly close the distance between us and get both of us caught in the fire tornado. We're both flung away like dolls. Flames to scatter... Flames, too, scatter in every direction. An attack like this would be a disaster for the audience if it weren't for the magic barriers around the arena that are maintained by security guards during sorcerer matches. I don't see where Wolf is now, but as for me, I've managed to steer myself toward one of Wolf's crystals. I place around as I'm flying across the arena, but Wolf is definitely not in this corner. I'm in the clear. I do have a problem in that I'm too high up in the air. With my current trajectory, I'm sure to fly over the crystal, not onto the crystal. Lucky for me, I still have another trick up my sleeve. I am gifted with willpower. He who has strong willpower is a master of the earth. He who is master of the earth is a master of gravity. Amplify! The surrounding gravity suddenly magnifies, pulling me down with a force so powerful I hit the floor almost as soon as I've cast the spell. All I can hear is the orchestra. Everything else has gone quiet. And then the audience. They erupt in cheers and applause. I suppose I put on a good show. The wind is knocked out of me and I'm sore, but I get back on my feet. Wolf's crystal, I see, is in pieces. It broke my fall, and in turn I broke it. One of her other two crystals seems to have been damaged by the scattering flames, but it wasn't broken. Her last crystal is undamaged. My own crystals were all damaged by the fire, but none have been broken. This gives me the upper hand. If I can get to her damaged crystal, the match is mine. Goodness, kid, what the hell were you thinking? 
That was called scoring, little lady. Sometimes you have to sacrifice yourself for a point. A little pain never hurt anyone. Indeed. The old wizard slowly floats down between us, having used wind magic to distance himself from the stunt I pulled with the fire tornado. Nice reflexes, old man. Are both of you able to continue? In fact, that old wizard just gave me an idea. Yeah, I'm fine. So am I. Wolf faces me again. Her gaze is cold and emotionless, like it was at the start of the match. I can't read anything on her face. It's like she's wearing a mask. Except she isn't. On the contrary, it feels like she's absorbing everything about me. It's like she can read my soul. Well, I certainly won't give her time to read her fill. Quickly, I charge my next attack. Willpower. Transform! I aim it at the ground and cast a quake. The arena shakes furiously. An earthquake? I'm sure this kind of magic would hardly do any damage to a mage at wolf's level, but it doesn't have to. All it needs to do is delay her tornado for just a few moments while I recharge my willpower. As I expected, Wolf casts Tornado. But this time... Nullify! Casting Nullify negates the gravity beneath my feet. My feet lift from the ground. When Wolf's Tornado appears, I am already high up in the air, this time readying both willpower and courage. The anti-gravity effect only lasts a short while, but all I needed was a few moments with a bird's eye view of the arena. Hmm? Didn't think I could do this, huh? Summon! A flash of white light, a thunderous sound. A bolt of lightning shoots out from my palm. It rips through the air towards the towards and then past Wolf, straight towards her damaged crystal. Victory is mine. What? Wolf just stands there, her cold eyes tracing the movement of the lightning bolt. She must have not expected this. Oh. In a fraction of a second, the lightning has struck the crystal dead on with another flash of blinding light and a loud bang. The light fades, the thunder dissipates, and I hit the ground with an unceremonious thud. Ignoring the pain, I force myself to stand up in order to accept victory from the referee. However, the referee hasn't moved. I look at the crystal and see that it's only slightly more cracked than before. What? Damn it, damn it, damn it! Wolf is still gaping at her damaged crystal. She seems almost as surprised as me. It's almost as if she were admiring what I just did. I straighten my posture and hear most of my joints crack. My muscles are burning. Well, I can just do it again. That was lucky. Sometimes these things happen, but the next bolt will shatter your crystal without fail. What are you going to do, eh? Wolf looks at me, again with that cold stare, and those empty eyes. She's going to lose the match, but she doesn't look worried. She doesn't look interested in the crystal as much as me. She's giving me the impression that the sorcerer match is beneath her. Who is this woman? Her gaze is off-putting. How can you keep so calm during sorcerer? <laughs> Suddenly, she bursts out laughing. <laughs> I like you, kid. You're crazy, and I like crazy. Especially that trick with the fire tornado. How'd you come up with something like that? Sorcerer is surprisingly amusing, I have to admit. Just as I thought, she's not a sorcerer player. Throughout the match, she, le she has never once tried to score. She just defends herself and attacks me. What is she? So, what are you gonna do now? Tornado again? Water mu magic? I bet you're running out of tricks. She smirks at me. Tricks? Kid, I don't use tricks. The only trick you need to know to survive in this world is how to cheat death. I hate philosophy. I hate being talked to like I'm a child. And I hate being tricked. Well, if you're wasting my time, I suspected you weren't a sorcerer from the beginning. Let's dispense with the trades. Use everything you've got on me. Go on, I won't be satisfied otherwise. Everything I've got? Everything you've got. Wolf falls silent. Her amused expression disappears, replaced with the now familiar cold, empty-eyed face again. Be careful what you wish for, my lord. Wolf stretches her arms and legs out wide. In her right hand, she gathers courage. In her left, willpower. <clears throat> this is unusual. Hasn't she been using faith? She should only have two masteries, but she used intelligence before when she summoned water. Summon. Her right hand turns bright with red light. Summon. Now her left hand turns bright with yellow light. This isn't... possible. She's preparing to cast two different magic spells at the same time! Wait. No. She's using combo magic like before, but by herself? Isn't that cheating? Is that even possible? Amplify. Wolf makes a fist with her right hand. Amplify, and then with her left. 
I look up to see a crack in the blackened sky. The sky? But we're indoors. But it looks transparent, like the night. No, it's... Something like a portal! And coming through an enormous flaming ball of molten rock! The object keeps growing and growing, and still it's not at the rim of the portal yet. It looks like it could be 40 feet across! 50! 60! I'm frozen. I've never seen something like this before. I'm going to die! At my father's birthday celebration, I'm going to die. STOP! I turn to where the shout comes from and find our referee standing right in front of Wolf, his ears reddened and his wrinkles all curved into V's. What in the name of man are you doing calling Meteor in a sport match against a 17-year-old? Meteor? That thing is... Meteor? I've heard of this magic, but never imagined I'd actually see it. I didn't think it could be summoned indoors. I glance up again, but the portal has disappeared, and with it, Meteor. <laughs> Wolf's laughter fills the stadium as she lowers her arms and releases all magic power. Sorry, ref, our little lordling demanded it. The old wizard grunts in irritation. The whole stadium is silent. Even the orchestra has stopped playing. Everyone is waiting to see what this wolf will do next. And then at last, from some distant seat... Bravo! Soon the whole crowd is roaring with applause. Th that was one hell of a match! I believe I speak for everyone when I say that we've all been treated to a superbly exciting show! Dragoon Commander Janice Wolf, with her incredible, powerful, offensive magic and Frederick Godwin, who impressively held his own against all odds, ladies and gentlemen! Oh, that's right. Referee, what's the status of the match? The old wizard stays silent until the audience quiets down. I declare this match over. We'll call it for whoever has the most points. He turns and glances about the arena. Wolf, one broken crystal. Godwin, no broken crystals. Frederick Godwin is the winner. He doesn't deserve it, though. But then again, it's a sport, and sports have rules. The audience erupts. They shout, Frederick! Frederick! And clap like drunken monkeys. You did a good job, kid. You were sloppy, but I'm impressed you surpri- But I'm surprised you lasted as long as you did. Not bad at all. I'm in a daze, and can neither respond to Wolf's congratulations or the announcer's questions when he comes for a post-game interview. Soon they both leave. I soon leave as well, though I really can't say how much time passes before I start to make my way out. Outside the hexagon, my father is waiting for me. I can see by the look on his face that he isn't as excited as the rest of the people in the stadium. What kind of fighting was that? I won. Indeed. I've seen... <coughs> Excuse me. I've seen many battles, both inside the arena and out. I would not call tonight's match a victory. Sorcerers won according to points, not damage incurred. Did I not do you proud on your birthday? Do you know why your thunder failed to shatter Wolf's crystal ball? Do you know why your fire was so easily extinguished by her water? He knows I know. I've heard these rhetorical questions all my life. He'll tell me whether I answer or not. Because fire and thunder depend on courage, but you are not gifted with courage. Your strongest magical traits are willpower and compassion. Why don't you ever use compassion-based magic? Heal is, an in Heal is an infinitely useful spell. It's certainly much a better choice than fire and thunder, for heaven's sake. If you would just play the game slowly, healing yourself when you had to, you could have made that match into a battle of endurance. In such contest, he who has compassion has the advantage. You could have beaten Wolf if you used your head. I could have beaten her. In other words, I didn't. Compassion is useless. I'm doing just fine with courage, and I did beat her. Huh. Is that so? My father's face makes a pitying smile. What about Wolf? She was using faith and intelligence in the beginning, but that meteor was willpower and courage. Janice Wolf is the commander of a police special forces unit who's been in countless battles, real battles, for more than a decade. Her gifted traits are willpower and courage, but she can wield all magic with deadly force. A special forces commander? Well, that explains many things. So her gifted traits are willpower and courage, but she was going to only use wind and water magic on me. She was playing with me. I need to get out of here. I storm out of Sorcerer Stadium through the departing spectators. Lord Frederick! Best fight I ever saw! Unbelievable, Lord Frederick! You beat a Dragoon Commander! The fire tornado strategy was brilliant! This match was historic! Lord Frederick, you'll be a great mage someday! Their words are meaningless. What does a lord care for the opinions of those below him? Peasants and bastards, the whole damn lot of them.
And then we switch. So I'm starting over and I'm going to be making completely different decisions from now on because I want to know what I can do to make this last longer because I know things change. I know things can be different and this game can be so much longer. I know it. I know it. I'm, or at least I'm pretty sure because like the screenshots in, and, the, and the video for the game on Steam indicate that there's so much more I can do but it really depends on my choices. So... Yeah, I'm just gonna do it again. I'm just gonna do it all over again. I don't care how long it takes me. I'm just gonna do it all over again. And for the record, it took me seven hours to do the first t the first playthrough. So like, it's gonna take me probably like another seven hours to do a second one. So have fun, because <laughs> I am not satisfied. I need to do more. All right, I'm gonna end it here, because God damn it, I need to do this again. All right. Later, guys. See you in the next one if you decide to join me. Bye. Hey, guys, and that was an octave higher. If you're interested in checking out the next episode, then just click on the icon on the right-hand side. If you're interested in any of the other games that I have listed here that have very similar storylines that are pretty intricate, I would say to check them out as well. And if you want to subscribe, just click my icon and we're good to go. So, yeah. See you later.